<laughs> Ty is hosting for the first time and pulls a miserable, oh my goodness. miserable <laughs> mute. All right, All Ty, take it away. Do, do we want to redo this? No, no, no. It's no fine. This is it's golden. Fine. We can cut it. It'll just confuse people. So, Bobby has sabotaged me and muted my mic. But uh, good evening and welcome to the Schooner Pod, brought to you by the Pigskin Podcast Network and rap gangs so i'm ty i'm gonna be your host tonight for our very special march madness panel we're gonna be doing it around the horn style so we're gonna keep it quick keep it concise i will be moderating the panel which i know already sounds funny and uh my co-hosts here who i'm about to introduce are going to be discussing debating and picking the teams so joining me tonight on the panel is going to be the schooner pods host and founder the man whose picks cannot be sounder, Bobby Howard, coming up here. Thank you for the introduction, right. Ty. Bobby doesn't uh, want to say hi. To he probably muted himself as well. Next up, we have co-host of the pod, the man who knows about the human bod, Jameson Maxwell. And rounding the out human our bond, panel, you know. Rounding out our panel, the litigator who is a full-time OU hater. If Shakespeare was a privateer with a gambling problem. We have Boat and Blake. Thank you, Ty. These are, these are nice. That was nice, Ty. I was expecting that you were going to say a bunch of offensive stuff. No, no, that's later. That's later. So, oh, great. This is, we put the ad reads right at the front. So, the advertisers hear their ad read, they hear non offensive stuff, and then <laughs> they go away and we roll into the juicy stuff. So, as we jump into our stuff, I just want to point out we're picking off, you know, the teams and we're also picking off the lines. And you know what they say? about March Madness lines. It's a lot like taxes. You can just make up the numbers nobody checks anyways. I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm going to be honest. Um, as a non-gambler of sports gambling, except for whenever I use promo code TPPN on DraftKings, um, I haven't, I didn't even check the lines going like the first way through because I feel like a lot of the times those can steer you away. Just go with your gut. I've been watching these teams the whole year, not as much as Blake. But I'm just going with my gut because, you know, March Madness has a brain of its own. Yep, I think Jameson kind of has this correct. Like, I first thing I do, I look down, sit down with the bracket. Then once we get closer, maybe to Wednesday or maybe even Thursday morning, that's when I'll really start digging into the lines and seeing what I like just because I don't want those numbers to sway what I've seen with my own eyes. I know Vegas has been watching these games too, but look. I've been here since November. I've been staying up till 1 a.m. watching these random West Coast teams that are in the 15-16 seed. I know this shit. So let's get on. To, let's get on with it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, <clears throat> absolutely. I, I'm honestly uh, uh, a bit of a tier below Jameson and Blake here. But you know what? I'm going to I'm going to pull from, uh, I believe, the champion of, the, of last year, uh, Ty, and uh, shoot from the hip because, uh, you know, that worked from hit for him. 
uh, a lot of really dumb stuff happens in uh, March Madness. So you know what? Let's do it. Let's roll with it. Yeah, so without further ado, we're just going to start rolling in. So we're going to start out with the teams that are looking to play their way into the tournament. Because we're an OU pod, we want to mention OU just narrowly missed out. We were the, the second team out, which is unfortunate. We had a, we had a good team, a good run, and we're going to touch on OU in, in the NIT at a later date. Oh, yeah, so what, no, what do we got first? <laughs> Let's take a look at what we got. We're trying to do a lot, a lot of stuff here, but we will definitely touch on OU for sure, Ty. I, I, I didn't mean uh, in this pod. I meant at a, a later date. Let, yeah, let's I, not, I let's not pick the 11s. Let's just start at Gonzaga, Ty. What do you say okay. about that? Yeah. So uh, before I before I pass it off to you guys, we have uh, Gonzaga versus uh, Georgia State or Georgia Southern. One of those. They're in Georgia. Uh, and Mark Few is hoping to be one of the few to move to round two. Is uh, Gonzaga pulled? Oh on. no, he's done it. I have won oh, no. every single game. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be good. We we lose Bobby as a as a host. I'm like, oh god, we're great now. We're not gonna get any stupid little puns or anything. <laughs> what do you know? Ty's just gonna hit us with sixty whatever. You know how many no, I, games there? I will say that that was one of the that's one of the weaker ones. You know what? It, they, they all can't be winners, you know. But you know what? I, I for one loved it. I love a I love a good bad pun for sure, Ty. So let's get this thing started here. Uh, how are we wanting to do this? Do we want to just go like so? One, two, we're gonna three, go eight? for for simplicity. Let's just go top to bottom. We'll snake it top to bottom, bottom to top. So Bobby, you're taking this one. Blake's gonna mm-hmm. end on this one. Blake will start on the next one, and, and we'll snake it. Yeah, look, folks, we've got a lot of picks. I'm just going to make this short and sweet. Uh, this is going to be Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Georgia State shouldn't have been a 16 seed. Doesn't matter here, though. Gonzaga rolls them. All right, next game, we have Boise versus Memphis. No blue field advantage here. Who do you guys have? Easy. Boise State. Memphis, as we talked on the first college basketball podcast this year, is trash. I know Ford Brandon's always up in my messages saying, Memphis is hot. They've beaten some teams. No, they haven't. They've beaten number four Houston, which we'll get to a little bit later, but they love to beat up on the little small-time nobodies and then get bodied by better opponents. This team is horribly coached. Penny Hardaway, I think, is the second-worst coach in this tournament, above Jamie Dixon, of course, (laughs) but... Uh, yeah, poorly coached team. Larry Brown, I think, is the one really calling the shots, which shows everything we need to know about this. B- Boise, I think, is a pretty good team. Like, Leon Rice, great head coach. They had some success this year, like, and last year and this year. That's some sustained success over two years. I don't bet on trash. Give me Boise. Gonna roll them. I really like Boise here. Um, Bobby, if you do that again, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> don't hurt you, you, me you, have, you have no power here, Blake. Honestly, Bobby's though. watched like five games a year trying to cut off my knowledge. Blake's going to have a couple of games that they're going to be very passionate about, and he, this was one of them. You saw it coming from a mile away. I think Boise's the easy pick here. People will pick Memphis just because the common folk know about Jalen Duran, and then they'll think Imani Bates is playing when he actually probably won't. So I, I like Boise a lot here. Yeah, I, I also am going to go with Boise as well. Um, yeah. Fade Pity Hardaway. That that Memphis team has a horrible culture. So uh give me Boise. I swear to God, if we game date ourselves though. I've got I've got an idea. Hold on. I have a I have this weird feeling that Blake and I know the most about this slate. Um and Bobby being at the end, I could see him just like following us into the dark every single time. Do we want to keep Do you him not want me to help you? edge? Bobby in the middle. Bobby in the middle. All right. Yeah. Do, we'll middle but Bobby. also at the same time, he might just copy our first pick every single time. So I think I want Bobby at the top still. No, you've I've already, talked you've myself already out made of your it. decision. We're running out of time. Next game. Okay. Utah okay, click versus Boise New Mexico State. Will we see crying huskies? Okay, I, I'm on I'm on UConn here. Yes. Yeah, I like UConn. I think they're kind of a sneaky good team that can kind of um you know sneak their way into the sweet sixteen. Um, the games I've watched them, they're pretty good. They're pretty solid team. Feisty on defense. I like UConn. Bobby? Yeah, I, I'm going with UConn here. You, UConn, New Mexico, or New Mexico State would be a horribly beautiful uh, college football game that I'd love to pick. <laughs> but uh, UConn basketball is way better here. Yeah, give me, uh, give me the Huskies to roll on. 
I'm going three for three with y'all. I think this one's an easy one. UConn, RJ Cole, Sonogo in the middle. I think they're a very athletic team. They like to crash the board, something I really like in March. Kind of underwhelmed me in the regular season. When they beat Auburn early on at Atlantis, I thought this team was for sure going to be in the top 10 consistently this year. Just never could find that uh, continued success. But look, if you're looking for one of those sneaky 12 teams that you want to look at, look no further. New Mexico State is a great team. They bring in a lot of power six transfers. Um, Teddy Allen, If you, when you're looking at these uh, like March Madness upsets, you really want to look for those small guys that can dominate, like that are offensive machines. And Teddy Allen for New Mexico states that he can really take over this game. I could see this one being close. I'm probably going to take New Mexico spread. But give me UConn to continue. All right. So for our next game, we have the Arkansas Razorbacks versus the Vermont Catamounts. I actually tried Googling what is a catamount to figure it out, and it just kept showing me pictures of mountain lions. So I guess I'll never know. But who do you guys have in the game? I'm not buying the hype here. Get this Vermont being good. They are great. They're a good a, uh, American East team. But look, J.D. Note can't have that Kimball Walker style effect that he could just take over games. I like that in March. Vermont has not played a top 200 team all year. They just beat a whole bunch of nobodies in their conference. One that I love me some Maine Black Bears. I love me some Binghamton. But look, these teams are really bad i'm not buying this i'm gonna take arkansas spread i think they are so much better than vermont and people are just riding them and i don't understand it it's just they're looking at records they're not actually looking at who vermont has played give me arkansas i am but a simpleton i listen to what uh people smarter than me tell me in uh, college basketball and from what i've heard vermont style uh, is very similar to what Colgate had. If you were listening to the selection show, you probably heard that as well. And, you know, they kind of have a one of those weird, like, home advantages. This game's being played up northeast, uh, I believe in Maine, or kind of in that area. Uh, so, yeah, uh, give me Vermont. This feels like a very weird upset type of thing. I have it circled. Uh, Arkansas struggled with Colgate as well last year. So, you know what? Yeah, That's the let's key, Bobby. The struggled. They didn't lose. They struggled. I was about to say, Arkansas was super solid, and there were some scary moments in that game, but they were just way better than them, and they handled it whenever it came down. I think it was like the last five minutes, they just ran away with it whenever it got scary. I like Arkansas a lot here because they're just a solid team. They, um, I just... I just don't see them as an upset candidate in the first round. While some other big top four teams, you know, they have their vices. I feel like Arkansas is just a solid, good team that doesn't have too many weaknesses. It's in right. Buffalo, New York, which is basically Maine, by the way. Go ahead, Ty. I'm sorry. So next up, we have Arkansas versus a play-in game between Rutgers and Notre Dame. Uh, this is actually, we didn't discuss this. How are we going to handle this one coming in? Would we like to... So, I, I propose maybe first we pick who do we think is going to play, and then from there. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll just start. So I'm assuming – I think Rutgers is going to win this game. Um, Rutgers been very hot and cold, but they did have a stretch this year where they, they got really hot and beat a bunch of highly ranked teams. But then they didn't end the season as well. Um, I just really haven't been that excited about Notre Dame basketball. Two kind of gross 11 seeds I'm not too excited about. And I'm not excited about Alabama either. Um, but – if I'm just going to say I'm thinking all three teams are gross, I'm going to pick the higher seed and not be happy about it. So I'll pick Alabama. Yeah, I, I'm with you here. I don't like any of these teams. Um, but, yeah, give me g give me six Alabama. I, I, I would honestly fade Alabama no matter what here uh, just because I could see this being a bit sloppy. 11 seeds tend to do really well. Look at UCLA last year. So, uh, yeah, no, give me give me the Tide. I am totally against y'all in this one. I think so. If we're going to start with this game, I'm going Rutgers. I think Notre Dame is really not that good of a team. Honestly, my biggest surprise to be in this tournament. It makes no sense. If you're an Aggie fan, if you're a Sooner fan, you should be livid that Notre Dame won. They beat Kentucky at home, which is a good win. I'm going to give them that, but... A&M just did on a neutral floor was blowing through the SEC tournament. OU beat a uh, a the 
co-champion and Baylor on a neutral court, those wins are significantly better than Kentucky at home. It makes no sense this Notre Dame team's in. And I understand Rutgers. Rutgers probably should not be in. But, like, Rutgers is fun. They lose to really bad teams. They beat really good teams. Like, I like that coming into March. So I don't have as much of an issue there. So get Notre Dame out of my face. I think Rutgers is going to win. But Alabama, nothing to like about this team. They like to shoot threes and shoot layups. And they really suck at shooting threes this year. Nate Oates has always kind of done that analytical NBA style, which I it can make deep runs in March because if you get hot from the three-point line, that's going to keep you in the tournament for a long time. But guys consistently have not been able to hit shots this year. I think Rutgers has always risen to the occasion when it comes to those uh, to those like higher games. And Rutgers also great in the paint. Alabama's not going to be able to get the two ball off. Give me Rutgers. All right. So coming up next, we have Texas Tech versus Montana State. So Tech, as we know, just barely edged out OU in the Big 12 semis. They are expected to go pretty far in the tournament. Who do you guys have? I used to be Big Sky Blake. That was one of my first monikers coming into this because, damn, do I love some Big Sky basketball but I think Texas Tech's just going to steamroll them here. Montana State, their bread and butter is that they're really good in the paint. They like to cut in. They're all layups, dunks, all that. But the problem with Texas Tech is they're exceptionally well at defending in the paint. They like to muck things up. Montana State is good at shooting the three ball. They just don't shoot a lot of them, which is kind of problematic. So I would think they would really have to rely on that and kind of change their dynamics, which they've done this year to pull off the upset. I think the spread was around 16-17. I'm still probably going to lean for them on the spread, but I just don't see the upset pick here. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, Texas Tech, too sturdy here. They get a win. Yeah, Texas Tech's defense overwhelms Montana State. I like also a big win here. All right, so next up we have Michigan State versus Davidson. I know who Kanye West is rooting for in this one. <laughs> No, no. Okay, that was a good one. (laughs) That that was really good. I like this Davidson team a lot. Um, And I really think that they could be primed to beat a team like Michigan State. Michigan State has shown to falter a lot this year. Um, They've been very hot and cold. But the problem is I think momentum is extremely key for mid-majors. And betting on a team that lost in their tournament um, coming out and then having – uh, to face, you know, a blue blood of basketball in Michigan State. I just can't get over that in my head. I really want to pick Davidson here, but I, I, I just can't because I, I just got to air with momentum. Never fade Izzo in March. Give me Michigan State. 100% fade Michigan State right now in March. There is nothing that inspires confidence about this team. Jordan Lawyer Started his career at Michigan State, now the number one player on this Davidson squad. I love the revenge factor coming into this game with Davidson. You get a guy that wants to beat his his original school. You get a Davidson team that, kind of like what I said, with a lot of these mid-majors, can shoot the three ball really well. I like that when it comes to upsets. I don't think people just kind of rely on, oh, Tom Izzo, oh, good in March. But let me see if I wrote down the stat. No, we'll probably get to it next round. But uh, Izzo's had a losing against the spread record in his past, I think, since 2016. Uh, so not anything that inspires confidence. He just kind of had that one Final Four run back in 2015-2016, uh, and people just still think he's that way. These Michigan State teams just really haven't been that good. So I'm taking Davidson. All right, so coming up next, we have Duke, the Blue Devils, versus Cal State Fullerton. Who do we have? Is ESPN's number one basketball boy going to carry it through in his last time coaching in the tournament? We know ESPN has already paid off CBS for Cal State Fullerton to drop this because all we're going to hear about come Saturday and Sunday is Izzo versus Coach K if that happens. That's all ESPN's going to talk about on Sports Center. It's going to be so annoying. I hate it, but that's what happens. The big media companies, they like to pay for these narratives. Fullerton, 
Not a good school. I would love to see the upset. What a hilarious way to send out Coach K. I think there's going to be some embarrassment. Like, in my opinion, I thought Davidson was going to knock him off next round with a three-point uh, shooting team, three-point shooting team like that. I think Coach K is not going to go out in a pretty way. It's going to be very similar to what we saw in UNC. Give me Duke just because they paid off Fullerton to throw this game. So every time we do this, uh, every year, there's always one where I get real weird with it. And I don't think Jameson's the one to follow me on this. Give me Fullerton. I want to see Coach K uh, completely implode. Um, and yeah, you know, Blake's right. They probably aren't the ones to do it. They're not a tasty 15 seed. But sometimes they cut, like, you, sometimes the, 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 the stars just align. And I really hope that's the case with Fullerton. I'm picking them because I want to, not because I know they're going to win. Yeah, Cal State Fullerton is not you no know, the tastiest, like you said. I was thinking about picking this as you know a crazy seed as well, because obviously just you know Duke going down versus UNC just is prominent in my mind. But then I clicked the little I button right next to there on ESPN, and it told me that Cal State Fullerton has more turnovers than assists this year. And I said gross, <laughs> and I picked Duke, and I didn't look back. Okay. All right. So next up we have. The Baylor Bears versus Norfolk State. Can Norfolk State bear Baylor's offense? That was a bad one. <laughs> Boo. Baylor, move on. Boo. Click the Baylor button. Baylor. Blake UNC versus Marquette. I don't even have Blake, to Blake is muted, and, and I have no idea what he said. He's, I'm, he still doesn't know he's muted. Oh, oh. there we go. Norfolk oh, State did it once. You can't do it again. They've already done it once. All right. Ty, credit, you got it. UNC versus Marquette. No intro. Blake, who do you got? Easy. Marquette. This UNC team, a lot of people are going to overrate because of what they saw versus Duke. They have been really uninspiring this year. They have a lot of talent, which boost up their, like, Kim Palm metrics and stuff like that. But... They've just been a low-energy team this year. I, I don't like them. I like Shaka Smart as a dog. I feel like that's Marquette's a perfect place for him to be because he'll probably always be a dog in a tournament, and we'll see something like vintage VCU uh, Shaka Smart. So give me Marquette to upset North Carolina. I love myself some Brady Manic, so I'm picking UNC. I'm going with Marquette because I agree UNC has been gross this year. I remember specifically watching them versus Kentucky, and I think they lost by, like, boot, help me out, Blake, like almost 30 or something. Like, yep. no, give me Marquette. <laughs> they lost bad. Like, their UNC's losses this year were bad. <laughs> All right, so next up we have St. Mary's versus the winner of the play-in. It would sure suck to lose to a bunch of nuns. <laughs> uh, okay okay this game sucks i'm not happy about it wyoming getting into the tournament next to notre dame frauds should have been a m in oklahoma but okay whatever indiana though indiana has been pretty fun here at the end i've been kind of closely monitoring them and how they did in the tournament they've got some good momentum even though they got tripped up in the semis i think indiana wins and beats st mary's here even though st mary's is a team that a lot of people will fade and they're really good don't get me wrong i feel like a lot of people want to just fade a st mary's as a five seed but i just like indiana i feel like the five seeds, the five seeds that get beat are teams that aren't like st mary's here um st mary's i, I think they're from what i've seen a solid team and uh, I think they get the win over Wyoming or Indiana here. I think Wyoming gets the 12 seed. I want to see Jason oh. cry. Maldonado's <laughs> going to go off, drop a triple-double. It's going to be great. I love, I love this Wyoming team. Such a fun team. Great story. This is really what I think. I'm glad they put Wyoming in the tournament. The advanced metrics weren't there, but I think the Mount West was a great conference this year. I think definitely deserved it over OU and A&M, just on principle. Fun team. Actually, energy around this program. Can't say that about the Sooners or the Aggies, but <laughs> look, I like St. Mary's a lot. And it would, it's going to break my heart. They're going to beat Wyoming because St. Mary's makes things slow and sloppy. And that's what I like. They did it versus Gonzaga. They make it, they make you take tough shots. 
And I like that. I like that a lot. I don't think whatever team comes at that 12 seed is an elite shooting team that can get over that. I just like how slow and sloppy they play. It's great. And I think, can honestly, they can make a deep run into the tournament. So give me St. Mary's. All right. Next up, we have UCLA versus the Akron Zips. There's no zippers in basketball, so I think we know who has the advantage. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Jesus is going to keep oh, getting God. worse, aren't they? <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, who do you... Give me Akron. I don't think this UCLA team is really that good. I think last year they almost lost to Michigan State and shouldn't have made a deep run into the tournament like they did. And really, all the expectations this year have been based off of preseason hype from how well they did in last year's tournament. They've been injured and banged up, I know that, but the Pac-12 wasn't very good. And just they did not inspire hope for me. And I think this Akron team... They're very athletic. Ali Ali, he's my man. I bet on Akron so many times this year and lost like every single time. But Ali Ali, <laughs> the man, they are, I feel like this is the underdog team people should be talking about. Not your Vermont Catamounts, not your Colgates of the world, none of those other ones that people are just hyping up because, oh, some pundit told them they haven't seen a single second of those games, but they're saying, oh, they're better than a Providence or something. I've seen this Akron team. They're feisty. They had a good run through the MAC tournament. And the last three years of the tournament, a MAC team has won. So give me Akron. I'm with Blake here. Give me the zips. Oh, I, yes! I love my boy Zippy. He he's, look, looks Suck dope. Suck it, Jaime. I, I, Jaime Jaquez. I, Look, not only that, but I feel like every time you have one of those teams that goes on a miracle run, the next year they bottom out. Uh, even though UCLA's had a kind of nice season. I just I see the magic with Akron this time. Yeah. Oh man, this is a bummer because I was ready to talk about Jaime Hawkes all the way to the Elite Eight. Ugh. I was going to deny you. <laughs> this the hurts. Akron zips, baby. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. I was going to pick UCLA, but carry on. All right. So next up, we have Texas versus Virginia Tech. Can Texas give them the horns, or is something hokey going to happen? No. <laughs> oh man, this is that's that's funny. Um, I don't know. This one's probably one of the hardest ones I've had on the slate for me. Not as much as like, do I want to choose an upset or not? Like, I think this is a really even matchup. Uh, te- Texas, you know, has got the you know the skill and they've got the better players. But Virginia Tech's just playing better basketball. So what is it going to come come down to in March? I'm, I'm going to pick Texas to win by like a point. It's going to be really close. I feel like every time a team goes on a magical like conference championship run, the second they uh, hit the big dance, they completely fall apart. Give me UT here. Boo! Boo, you knew it was always the Hokies. I always take out a future on them. I took out a future on them to win the... ACC tournament plus 900 cashed easy because this Virginia Tech team is really, really good. Great shooting. Mike White is an incredible coach. You'll remember him from the Wofford years. I think Mike White's just as good of a tournament coach as Chris Beard, and that's saying something. And so I love Virginia Tech in the spot. This Texas team has been uninspiring all year. They haven't meshed well. I think what's basically doomed them, like watching them versus TCU, was Marcus Carr still thinks he's the man. He's not. Marcus Carr's not the man, and they'll take a whole bunch of shots. He's not very good, and they just don't gel together. It's just this Texas team is cursed. They fired Rick Barnes. They fired Shaka Smart. And they hired uh, they hired Chris Beard to be their savior and going to lose in the first round again. I think Virginia Tech, white hot right now. Winner of the last 13 the last 15 games. They're going to knock them off. Hokies move on. All right, our next game, Purdue versus Yale. They announced this morning that any ties will be determined by who had less fun in high school. <laughs> so i know a lot of people like uh like yale in years past they have obviously beat baylor uh a few years back and james jones has been one of the best ivy league coaches um and has gotten them to the tournament at least three times under his tenure so that's great for them but honestly like purdue zach Eady, they're big they have a lot of offensive firepower Purdue horrible on the defensive side of the ball, but I just don't think Yale has any like can do anything to stop Purdue and 
they already played uh Yale already played Auburn this year they got beat by like 20 points it's like that's probably what's gonna happen in this they just can't deal with that top tier talent give me Purdue yeah I I don't know these these Yale kids are gonna take one look at Purdue Pete and just shit their pants uh give me Purdue yeah I like Purdue a lot here um you know Thunder fans, watch Ivy because he's definitely a possibility to land at four. Um, and I, I just think they've got an all-around really good offensive team. Uh, so I, I like Purdue a lot. All right. Next up, we have Murray State versus San Francisco. Personally, I always thought it was pronounced Missouri, but whatever works. <laughs> Uh, this one's this one's kind of an interesting one. It's you know the seven ten matchup. Murray State only having two losses on the year. Um, that's quite intriguing. I when I started doing my research on them earlier, I like this Murray State team a lot. Um, so even though San Francisco could be a tasty treat as well, I like Murray State a lot in this tournament. This is tricky, but you know what? I got to go with the San Francisco Dons. This is the first time they've made the tournament in a while. And, uh, you know, have, you know, a sneaky, rich basketball history. You know, if you look if you look at the crumbs in years past, the great, uh, I believe, Bill Russell played there, Eddie Sutton coached there. Uh, and you know what? I They just feel like one of those teams that can go on a run. So give me the San Francisco Dons to get this uh, sneaky upset over the Missouri State Racers, I think. I think they're the racers. Yep. I'm going with Jameson. I think this one, I've gone back and forth on it, but this Murray State team reminds me too much of those the seven seed Wofford team a few years ago. It's just that really ice hot, good mid major. Have they played good competition? Not really. They pay, played Auburn, lost by 13 so it's like that's a little uninspiring but they have a lot of the good thing about the transfer portal is a lot of these mid-majors have been able to get uh major like major conference talent uh just through the transfer portal and that's what murray state has done they put together a great roster i think this one's going to be close i just like murray state a little bit more and i want the in-state matchup between murray state and kentucky blake mark titus's dog picked uh san francisco state or sorry, San Francisco to win the title. And you're, you're just going to let Moses down like that? But they put, I think, the wrong USF on there. It was like they put the Bulls on there. So, <laughs> so the dog was That's fooled. the sign. That's the sign. That's the okay. sign to fade. There you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Next up, Kentucky versus St. Pete's. The St. Pete's is possessive, but what does he possess? <laughs> God. <laughs> Give me Kentucky. This one's pretty easy. St. Pete's, bless their heart, they were able to win the conference that Iona somehow fumbled. And that, and they're just in over their head versus Kentucky. That, like, that conference as a whole, really not that good besides Iona, so give me Kentucky. St. Pete's is possessing this L. Move on the Wildcats. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> yes. Analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, More analysis. Up. Arizona. <laughs> Arizona versus the winner of the play-in. Yes. <laughs> Arizona. And watch this, Hello. folks. Watch watch this play-in game. You have to watch this. Peter Kiss for Bryant is the leading scorer in the nation. He is a cocky. He is a cocky man. And it is incredible to watch him. I think this is the best 16 seed playing game we've ever seen in tournament history. And I'm not <laughs> kidding. I'm so glad Bryant got this game just so like they will have their own time that like we'll get to see Peter Kiss on the big stage before they do get blown out by Arizona. So watch this game. Trust me, even more than I'm going to watch, obviously all of them, but like even more than like Notre Dame and <laughs> Rutgers, I would be watching this game because Peter Kiss taunts. He does everything. He gets the crowd uh, lit up. And I think Bryant's not very far from Dayton and then Wright state is in Dayton. So it's going to be an electric atmosphere. Watch this game, but Give me Arizona. Where, where does he stand on the Marshall Henderson scale? Uh, like similar, very like mid major Marshall Henderson. Like that's without like the jail time and stuff. So that's <laughs> like that's the where jail we stand time is nice. Here. It's like it added sprinkles. So yeah, I Peter Kiss is awesome. Just like go watch his highlight tape. He's 
incredible. All right. So next up, we got TCU, the Horn Frogs versus Seton Hall. Who's horny for some frogs? You know who is. It's me. Defend Fort Dixon. Finally, I might get to watch my first TCU tournament win in my lifetime. And this is probably the first one since like the 80s when Jim Dixon himself was the point guard of our team leading us through the tournament. And so I love this matchup. These are two teams that love to just muck it up with one another. They're super physical in the paint. They just like to drive to the basket, throw it up and hope it goes in. And that's why I love TCU in this matchup because I think we have the better big men. I think Mike Miles is the X factor when it uh, when it comes to this game. He really can he can go out there score 16, 17, 18 points a night, which is crucial for these lower scoring teams. I think TCU wins this one. It's gonna be I hope so. Oh my god, if I could win one tournament game in my lifetime, it that's all I want. So give me TCU. The Jim Dixon factor scares me a little bit. I looked up the advanced analytics. Like somebody did like a expectancy in Kim Palm versus actual results uh, for all the coaches in March Madness. Jim Dixon was last by like a wide margin. Like there was nobody, there was nobody within like 20 or 40% of them. Like that's how bad he is. But I think this team's talented. I think they're special. Give me TCU. Move on to the round of 32. Look, th things are going too well for Do it, Bobby. Th things are going too well for Blake here. He's having a great time, but you know the law of averages it seems to tell me that something very crushing is going to happen, and Blake will be right back on the fire Jim Dixon trade. So, uh, yeah, give me. I Seton still Hall. am. Oh, I would have fired him today. It. If they if they had said like they're like one hour before the game, they're like you can fire him now. Are you gonna do it? I'm gonna say yes because I think anybody anybody with just a brain that sits in that seat can coach a better game than him. So oh, wow, oh my god, I'm giving I'm gonna give the dagger to Jameson here. What do you think? It's Seton Hall. It no, just it makes isn't. sense. It Why? just Why? makes sense. Because we're going to be watching the game together, and I can just see it. I can see a sad boy Blake once the clock strikes 11 and the game is over. Sad boy Blake. It just, I can see it right in my head right now. Give me Seton Hall. I probably won't make it to this uh, to Bobby's wedding this weekend if TCU loses. I don't think I can take it. I actually have hope. We... <laughs> This we got the perfect draw. Besides San, Di San Diego State, I'll get to him later. That's oh, the that's draw so, I wanted, obviously. So but this is a great draw for us. This is good. Like we're really two identical teams, but we just have the better pieces. Uh, it's, it's All right, so set so, up for failure. We gotta, we gotta cut it. We gotta keep going quick. So the next game, Houston versus UAB. Personally, this one reminds me of the movie Shrek because that dragon was a cougar. <laughs> oh, God. Like another, these are that's actually a good really one. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so um i like houston a lot and i understand blake might not but i mean this is a team that is I'm, I'm pretty sure is very heavily like senior and veterans and you know they've got guys that did well last year and never returners and then kyler edwards i like whenever i watch their games um i like houston a lot yeah, I'm gonna go with UAB here. This feels like a like a fun five twelve sort of situation, uh, and you know I know a lot of OU's fan base has tried to forgive Kelvin Sam, pardon me, Kelvin Sampson, but yeah, I don't know. It'd be fun to see him lose. This one has me torn. I'm so torn because Jordan Jelly Walker on UAB, one of the best nicknames in all of college football. He led UAB single handedly through that, uh, through the Conference USA Championship. And I gotta love that. Like, I love those mid majors where they have one guy they can rely on to get that early upset. And also on the flip side of the coin, I hate Houston basketball. I think Houston is the biggest fraud program in the nation when it comes to they're able to get high seeds because the American Conference is sneakily horrible at basketball. Like, I think horrible at basketball. And they just kind of beat up on teams. And, like, last year they had the easiest path to the Final Four because of all the upsets that happened before them. They had to beat nobody. They had two key injuries go down this year, Grimes being the most important, and they really rallied from that, and good for them. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. UAB Jelly Fam, we gotta ride Jelly Fam. Oh Houston God. Jelly Fam. I can't. I can't deal with. I can't deal with this Houston crap no more. I can't support them. They need to be exposed for the frauds that they are. Give me Jelly Fam. 
Oh my god. Right. The teams that I like like sneakily at like four and five seeds are just getting hit in this bracket. I'm starting to get nervous. You, you like know. the boring teams, Jameson. You like boring. Oh, UCLA not boring. Oh no. That's true. That's they're they're exciting. I'll All give right, you that. So next up, Illinois versus Chattanooga. Another Big Ten team. You know, this is my favorite pick this year to go deep into the tournament. So tasty. Give me Chattanooga. The Mox, baby. The Mox. The Mox are incredible. They have, they have, they're one of those teams that got a whole bunch of uh, power conference transfers. Most notably, De Souza from Kansas. And you might remember him from the last time when he <laughs> threw a chair at a player and got suspended 13 games. But that's why I like them. Malachi Smith is a great guard. Jean Baptiste, who hit the game winner, the buzzer beater game winner to send him to the conference. They have good guard play. They have a body that they can put on. Uh, Oh my gosh. They have a body that Kofi. they can put on Kofi. Kofi Coburn. Sorry. Gosh. Kofi Coburn. That's the easiest way to beat Illinois. Illinois is so easy. If Kofi Coburn has somebody that's basically my height trying to guard him in the post, he'll be like Shaq. But if you put any big body on him that can dominate him in the post, he goes weak. And Andre Curbelo, he was great last year, but hasn't been able to mesh with the squad. If he plays more than 10 minutes this game, he's going to be jacking up a whole bunch of bricks. It's going to keep it short for the mocks. I think the Mox had the bodies to bang with Coburn in the uh, in the post. They got that good guard play. I love Chattanooga. I love Chattanooga. Give me the Mox. Look, as much as I would love to move the Mox past uh, Brad Underwood, I I just can't. I, I don't Brad know. Underwood is a choker. He's a choker. I know he's a choker. Tournament. I know let's, he's a let's choker. Let's remember last year I had the lock of my lifetime versus Layola that he just got worked. I was slamming the entire game. I had about 10 slams that game when they were down, and he still couldn't get anything done. And that one they had Io Sumu. And I think this Chattanooga team has a very similar makeup as the that Layola team. So I don't know why you're backing Brad Underwood here they're frauds bobby don't let them take your cash too you, you know what i i want to hear what jameson has to say first and then i'll i'll pick because i kind of i kind of that's, that's not how this works okay fine i picked illinois and well that doesn't matter because i was gonna pick chattanooga anyway because yes. this is my favorite yes. pick. this is my favorite yes. pick out of all like you know the 13 verse fours five verse 12 so, you know I love Chattanooga here. And Blake said my exact damn analysis that I wanted to say is Kofi has a body to get put on him. D'Souza is a guy who played high in basketball Kansas, and he's a big body that can guard him. And I think that is a great recipe for a team that is hot with a great story, with a great buzzer beater to move on in the tournament. I like Chattanooga a lot. There we go. Right. There we go, so, Jameson. Finally leaking up for that assist. <laughs> yes. That felt great. That felt great. Next game, Colorado State versus Michigan. Another Big Ten team in the tournament. Who do we have? This? I'm not I'm not the biggest Colorado Wait. State fan. What? What's going on? No, never mind. What? Go for it. Bob, Bobby thought I was going out of order. That's wrong. Um I don't like either of these teams. Another game where it's like 6 and 11, I wish there was more to it. I really do. But I'm going to go with the sixth seed in Colorado State because Michigan's an absolute dumpster fire of a program. Yeah, I, I thought you were Blake for a second because of the way you said this. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with my guy Ant Wright and the, the, uh, the Michigan Wolverines here. They burned me. They're going to the dumpster, not Michigan. It's Colorado <laughs> State that's moving on. David Rodney has been electric this year. I love the Mountain West. I love the Mountain West this tournament. And Michigan blowing a huge lead to Purdue. Huge in uh, late in the season. I hate Michigan. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, oh, no, 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 sorry. no, 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 no. There we go. There we go. I don't want Bobby trying with his voter fraud over here. Give me Colorado <laughs> State. Typical Lib Bobby voter fraud. <laughs> oh, no. Voter fraud in Michigan. <laughs> oh no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So next up, we have Tennessee versus Longwood, which sounds to me like a court case involving a murder on OnlyFans. 
I, this pains me. I'm going with Tennessee, and it hurts because I think Tennessee should have been a two seed. The team that should have been the three seed is Duke. It makes no sense why Duke is a two seed in this tournament. Another ESPN, big media bias. They love their Coach K. That's all they care about. They like to see him. They try to set him up in spots to succeed. Give him one of the worst 15 seeds that should have been a 16 team seed team. They should have gotten Georgia State. Georgia State's a way better team. We could have maybe seen some 215 upset right there, but... I love this Tennessee team. They're great. They're physical. They beat Arizona, which was one of the hardest things to do this year. Longwood, though, if anybody out there wants to choose them, please. They're really good at shooting threes. The only problem is they try to run with teams, which is like not good for mid-majors. If you're really up and down the floor, it's like you're basically giving the power conference more shots to, to beat you. Like You kind of need to slow things down like and really just muck things up. So I don't like Longwood's DNA, but what a great story it would be if Longwood beat Tennessee. But give me the, give me the volunteers. I bet on Longwood and Vegas and they burnt me. Give me Rocky Top to advance. Yeah, I don't think the selection committee actually paid attention to any of the Sunday games. Putting Tennessee at a three, putting Iowa at a five. Absolute ridiculousness. I like Tennessee a lot. Let me give a shout out to my boy, Vescovi. The lefty for Tennessee, the games that I watched of him this weekend, man, I think he's got a little Ty Jerome in him. I like him. There we go. All right, so next up, again, the real inflation problem, plaguing problem, plaguing this nation is Big Ten teams in this tournament. The Ohio State University versus Loyola of Chicago. Here's another gross matchup for me because I don't know what to think of Ohio State, and I don't even know if they know what to think of themselves. I feel like they're another team that just can't catch themselves right. Are we getting the good Ohio State team that, you know, has big-time wins versus a lot of, you know, they won versus Duke, they won versus Illinois, they won versus Wisconsin, uh, Seton Hall, Michigan State, but then they just – they, but then after saying all that, they have 11 losses. Like, what am I getting out of this Ohio State team? And I don't even know if Loyola is going to be able to show up, um, you know, in a tournament without Porter Moser. So I'm really, really torn here. I'm going to go Ohio State, but I, I don't I don't understand that team. My thing is, Loyola Chicago hasn't, you know, they, I mean, yeah, they're not as good w- without Porter Moser, but they're still in the tournament. They've still been playing very well. Uh, and you know, honestly, I, I, I like them a lot here and mainly I like them a lot because if we could, and we probably won't be able to move them on because Blake's not going to pick sister meme, but I like Loyola Chicago here. No, yeah, no. It, like, Ohio State has every problem in the world with them right now. Like, they have, like, a litany of injuries. They haven't gotten hot this year. EJ Liddell's a great player, though. I'll give them that. Like, at least they have somebody. I am not. I I cannot do another tournament with the sister meme run. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of that getting shoved down my throat. I opened up a book the other day to start reading about Cap- the Catholic basketball uh, revolution throughout the history, and the foreword was an interview with Sister Meme. I'm tired of <laughs> Sister Meme getting th- shoved down my throat when she has this. Leo Chicago, I have nothing wrong with their program. I have nothing wrong with the actual team themselves. I'm tired of the marketing machines of ESPN, CBS, all these big major media companies taking the shine off of them and giving it to somebody that isn't even really watching the games. She's going to only the big ones for the camera opportunities. She isn't there to actually study the basketball and celebrate the players on the court. I do not like that disingenuous type of fandom coming from somebody. I think this might be, there's a lot of things I would really hate to happen in this tournament. TCU loss obviously being number one in the first round, but I think another Layla run might break me. It might break my brain. Like it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. It just keeps happening. But Give me Ohio State. I can't deal with Sister Meme one more time. The the press tour. The press tour. They're going to have a retirement tour for her, too, probably. Like, the, <laughs> that's what ESPN is doing these days. They just latch on to somebody. They'll just give anybody a retirement tour. <laughs> All right. All right. Next up, we have Villanova versus Delaware. Will Jay Wright lead you wrong? <laughs> I, really I will good. say it was... It was that, or it was a joke about a man from Delaware stealing elections. So 
Oh no. <laughs> We're already like, at election jokes at we've the been counter. There. Two. We're at two jokes now. Uh the answer Bill Nova. But Delaware, Jameer Nelson Jr. Nova. Starting point guard for them. But yeah, give me Nova. How tall is he? Is he really small as well? I have no he he kinda yeah. Let me see. Jameer Nelson. We, we aren't through the yeah, first I, round. Yeah, I yet. hate Delaware here. We aren't through the first round yet, and we're at 50 minutes. No, oh, this is actually... We knew this was going to happen. We're, or we're making beautiful. great time, Bobby. We've looked down before, and it's been like an hour and 45 minutes, and we haven't even gone through the first round, so... <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Time. All right. Okay. All right. So, to move it, Kansas versus whoever comes jaywalking in from the play-in. Um, what is TCC? Is that Tulsa Community College? No, uh, is, <laughs> Texas a and Corpus Christi. Christi. They have a great mascot, by the way. Let me see if I can pull it up. I know, I know Ty will love this, that I'm spending time on the 16 seed. But honestly, a pretty good matchup. I think uh, Corpus Christi, like well, they're going to win this game. They're three-point dogs. They're probably, they're probably my lock of the four, uh, first four game. Uh, Texas A&M, we got to pull up the mascot, Bobby. We gotta give Texas uh, Texas A and M Corpus Christi their shine. I've seen them play basketball against uh, or basketball. I think they played played baseball against OU one time. Uh-huh. Uh, this is electric. Uh-huh. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Little tiki man. <laughs> what the what? Uh-huh. what I think the, I'm, okay. They might have. Right, they, yeah, this was the another Islander. iteration of it, too. They had another one, too, that looked like this. That had a goatee. Okay, so they're, they're Corpus Christi Islanders. It should have just... So they're the Island Boys. Okay, oh, there that. you go. I that rebrand. But Okay, this was actually supposed to be Jameson's turn. So, Jameson, kick us off. I already picked Kansas. Oh, yeah, it's Kansas. Duh. Kansas. KU. Sorry, Island Boys. Oh, somebody... I guess uh, he's problematic. There was a change.org petition... To oh, change no. the mascot, so uh, <laughs> you right, might have so to cut that segment, Kansas, Bobby. And <laughs> we're gonna move you on might have to cut that, game. Bobby. Change.org canceled. Canceled. I'm, not, I'm, just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna replace the image with the Island Boys. <laughs> that was problematic, Bobby. Our Why? Next, our next game that we are moving to now. This is gonna get Blake even more excited. <laughs> We got San Diego State versus Creighton. I'm starting to get a feeling that Creighton has some Creighton crumbs. That we're gonna see. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Just just move on, Jameson. Okay. Um, I want to see the world burn. Give me San Diego State. No, stop it. I <laughs> am so happy I'm in this position because I also want to see the world burn. Let's go, no. Aztecs. <laughs> Stop. Okay, this is another. They got the eight nine seed games right. I will give them that. It's just, it's good teams that are just banging bodies in the post. It's just, <laughs> it's it's impossible to get a point. Like that's what's so great about these. But Creighton, you gotta go Creighton for the sake of humanity, for for all that is holy. Please, please, dear God, Creighton, win this game. The fraud school that is San Diego State that plays nobody somehow gets recognition in big games, gets the best breaks to go their way i would say they have rigged everything but they're not a big enough school to rig they've just been so lucky so lucky in every sport and Clayton has a uh former heritage hall player on them as well tj alexander so shout Trey out there. alexander Trey alexander Trey. sorry very yeah i just them. doomed your pick i no i did not doom the pick i'm not I'm not letting this cursed franchise get through this, uh, get through this because I don't even think San Diego State's a real school at this point. I think it's just some sort of money laundering scheme that they're playing. They're paying their players, probably doing all sorts of illegal stuff. Can't wait for the report to come out in five years. When allegedly, they're allegedly, 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 we can't. We we've already we've already had some problematic things said. Just speculation. <laughs> Uh, but All right. I checked the change.org too, and it's like they needed a hundred signatures and only got forty. So, do with that what oh, you no. will about your problematic rankings. <laughs> okay, let's but... move on. All right. So next up, we have Iowa versus the Richmond Spiders. Iowa versus Spiders, or as I like to call it, just living in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
I love that you deli- your delivery is that of a bored stand-up comic. It's perfect. <laughs> I love it so much, Ty. Like, I... This is just so unfortunate for both teams. I think Richmond is a really great story, and I would love to see them go up against a traditional five, but dang, did they get hit by a bus when they got Iowa, who's, like, one of the hottest teams in the nation, that it's going to be a frustrating tournament to play just because they'll put the uh, Murray twins out in the four and the five and just stretch the floor, like... Iowa kind of became privy to the fact that they sucked on defense and really couldn't guard anybody in the post. So they're like, we're just going to put five shooters on the floor and run that. And nobody's going to be able to stop us because we score about a billion points a game. So I like where I was at. I know, I know, uh, no second weekend. uh, McCarthy is what I call Iowa's coach because he hasn't been able to get to the second weekend before, even though he had Luca Garza on his team. That was supposedly one of the best players in the nation. Never bought that. That's why you trust my analysis, but Give me Iowa. I kind of like what their DNA is. Just a hot shooting team. Poor Richmond. I feel bad. This would be a good upset pick if it wasn't Iowa there. Richmond screwed over OU. I don't feel bad for him at all. Let's go Hawkeyes. I, I sent it in our group text, Blake. I love the Spideys. I really wanted to pick the Spideys, but I think putting Iowa against them, that's just brutal. Like, I don't even see I, – I, I seriously, did the committee even watch Sunday games? Like, the brackets come out so soon, right after the games. Like, do they just make them just like, oh, cool. Iowa and Tennessee candidly won their games? Like, just throw it away. I don't get it. I really Stupid. don't get their rationale. Or it probably all floods from Coach K, if we're going to be honest. Like, his initial <laughs> bribe to get the two seed really set back the three seed. And, you know, that starts bumping teams. So if we really need somebody to blame, the big wigs in Bristol, Connecticut at ESPN are probably the first ones to, first ones to be on that list. All right. So up next, we have Providence versus South Dakota State. Honestly, who cares? Honestly, actually, th- I th- care because this is going to be a really fun game and probably the most picked, you know, upset out of all brackets because people have been hearing about South Dakota State. Oh, they're the darling. They're the future, you know, team that's going to just completely bust people's brackets. But guess what? I'm not buying that at all. And I'm picking Providence to handle them. Man, I. I know a lot of the simpletons, much like myself, have been riding with the Jackrabbits, but I'm going to pick them because of uh, I have a good buddy who uh, went to South Dakota State. So, or actually, sorry, actually coached South Dakota State uh, in football. So, dumb, 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 dumb rationale there. But you know dumb, what? Dumb, they're dumb, the Jackrabbits. Dumb. They have they have some fun. Then <laughs> sometimes they go on a run. Uh, they're going to get faded by uh, uh. Blake. Blake's going to pick Providence here. So, sorry, yeah. Jackrabbits. I know, I know the advanced analytics. That's the problem about advanced analytics is people don't really watch the games now. They try to act like they're college basketball experts. They come in and say, oh, Providence is really not that good. If you look at all these metrics, they didn't do the metrics themselves. Like, I love Ken Baum and stuff like that, but they're not the best. They're not the best and only way to determine the how college basketball games are played, and that's kind of the case Providence is in. It's like Kim Palm hates Providence, but Providence won a lot of games this year. They lot of won a lot of close games. Like Providence, if if it's a close game versus South Dakota State, Providence is gonna win because they're like eleven and two in games like that are within five points of five minutes less. Like this team just somehow has that clutch gene. And South Dakota State is a really, really good mid major. And I think that they are, like I could easily see them winning the game, but also at the same time, it just seems like everybody in America hasn't watched a South Dakota State game all year long and is now riding with them because they think – because some numbers are telling them to. Providence is still a well-rounded team. They won their regular season conference title. Like, they're not bad. But I will say, if this doesn't come true, Iowa-South Dakota State is going to be a hilarious game to watch because those teams don't play defense and the over-under will be in the 170s and maybe hit 180. Like, it's that's going to just be who gets the ball last. It's going to be wild. And I kind of want to root for that, but I also have to go back on public opinion that all these people that don't watch college basketball all year are just like, oh, yeah, South Dakota State's way better than Providence, even though I haven't watched a single game of these two teams all year. All right, so next up, we have LSU versus Iowa State, the Tigers versus the Cyclones. The winner of this one actually gets full ownership of Winniewood, Oklahoma. 
This is the worst game, I think, on the bracket. This is gross. This is gross. Iowa State, the 30-point All-Stars, they like just seem to just enjoy spending 40 minutes putting up less points than minutes like all year long. They had the hot start. We know that. Good defense, but they can't score with the lick. And then you got on the other end, you got LSU, whose Will Wade has been released because I guess the wiretaps that got leaked three years ago about him paying players very obviously on the phone was not enough. They needed an investigation uh, to figure that out, but I I gotta go just Big 12 homerism, Iowa State. They're gross. I hate it. I hate this game. I might not watch this game on a principal. The interim coach for LSU is the old Howard coach, and like Howard was abysmal under his reign. I don't want to hear about Michigan 79 or 81 or whenever it happened and the coach came in and won the national title. That's not going to be the case here. LSU's gross. They're not really that good. And yeah, I just going conference homerism. Give me Iowa State. I agree. This game is gross. And, you know, look, Iowa State burnt. I wouldn't look, I wouldn't even say burnt me last time out, like last week when we were doing the Big 12 tournament because it was a dark horse. So, yeah, I'll, that can miss sometimes. Uh, but you know what? I, I'll take the team that has a coach over the team that doesn't. And Iowa State's going to be happy to be back here after that really, really, a, tr- a couple really bad years. Um, they're going to have a lot of support. Uh, so, give me the Cyclones. I, I just, I, I think they'll scrap their way out to a win here um so it's gonna be gross so i i hate this pick yeah this is gonna be gross it's not gonna be fun give me iowa state all right up next we have wisconsin versus colgate this is actually colgate's second biggest rivalry their biggest rivalry is colgate versus british people it's a toothpaste (laughs) joke (laughs) oh that's mean uh God. Okay, I'm going to go Wisconsin. Um, I like this team um, as kind of a team that's not sexy, um, but they've got a lot of good players. I like Johnny Davis. Um, I think Colgate is not the Colgate of last year. Yeah, I I mean, as Blake alluded to earlier, Colgate's kind of a you know a hot name. You know, a lot of people are kind of behind them. But, you know, I, I really think Wisconsin is one of those teams that's just kind of built to advance in the tournament. Um, and I think they'll make a run here, uh, and it starts with Colgate. Yeah, I actually went back and forth on this game because I'm Wisconsin. Johnny Davis obviously got injured, and he's been playing, but uh, in uh, their conference tournament game was bricking shots. It just seemed like he didn't have a lot of oomph in that ankle, and that kind of scares me going into the tournament because that team is really reliant on him being their best player and scoring a whole bunch of points. If Johnny Davis isn't healthy in 100% and Colgate wins this game, they're making it to the Sweet 16 automatic. Like, they're going to kill whoever is the 6 or 11 right there. So this team has that potential to, like, if you want in your brackets to have that double-digit seed that came from nowhere, pick Colgate because they started off the team, they were, like, 4, 4, and 10, and then just, like, rattled off, like, rattled off, like, 20 out of 21 games. Like, they're really good offensively they play in a small nobody Mm -hmm. conference but i still think they have the potential to get hot like kind of we saw with arkansas but that's kind of the problem with them is they like to run they like to shoot a lot so they allow teams to they ever go cold during a game they can to the team can fight back against him but give me wisconsin all right up next usc versus miami i hear that the winner might get gas under seven (laughs) dollars I'm surprised that's the direction you went with it. So we'll take it. This is there the... was others. There, there were other. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> this is another gross game. Like it, Kansas really got lucky that this is their bracket under them. Like really, nothing inspiring. Hope Auburn kind of too. Give me USC. Andy Enfield, an incredible like March Madness coach. He was obviously at Florida Gulf Coast before. He's six and one against the spread in the tournament. Like I feel like USC or Florida Gulf Coast the year when they made their run, like always kind of down and out. But he gets the he gets his team prepared for tournament time. I think USC is better on the boards than Miami. Miami kind of started off the year hot, kind of got me excited, but really didn't end the season all that well. I just don't really like, besides maybe Virginia Tech, 
uh, out of the ACC. I don't like any of the ACC teams whatsoever. Uh, so give me, uh, give me USC. I'm pretty sure that Mario Cristobal could beat uh, Lincoln Riley in a fight. So I'm going to go with Miami over USC. Uh, Got to fade the Trojans here. I know this is obviously a different sport, but uh, I would be uh, lying if I told you I wanted USC to win this. So I, I have to fade them out of principle. Uh, and all of that, but you know, gotta show some love to my guy Cameron McGusty, uh, former Sooner. Yeah, Cameron McGusty's been really well, I'm doing really well, but um, I like to go with teams that got length. And let me tell you something does USC have length? And then they they start six nine guy, six nine plus, according to the ESPN note, on four of their positions, and then their guard they have Boogie Ellis. And if you remember Boogie Ellis, this was like a Duke guy, like high end recruit. He can go out and score a lot. I like USC pretty comfortable here. And let's – so I could just take another shot at uh, Penny Hardaway. Boogie Ellis used to be on Memphis, and they have a lot of problems this year with not having a point guard, and they let Boogie Ellis walk. So that That's shows right. you how good of a – that, that shows you how good of a coach Penny Hardaway is. Wait, was – did Boogie Ellis – did I mix it up? Did, he went to Memphis, not Duke, right? Yeah, he went to Memphis. He went to Memphis. Oh, okay. That's where I mixed it up. I thought he went to Duke. I must be mixing it up. But whatever. He was a big-time high school point guard. I remember watching tape on him. All right. Wrong blue So team. last up for the first round, we have Jacksonville State versus Auburn. Auburn representing the SEC. And actually just today, the SEC announced that they were going to be suing the NCAA. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey alleges that due to inflation – the SEC's cut of the profits just means less. They also <laughs> asked Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowsby what the Big 12 plan to do about this inflation plaguing college sports. And Bob Bowsby is quoted as saying, why not just print more 11 a.m. kickoffs? <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm just happy you pronounce his name Bob Bowsby instead of Bowsby. He's like Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's, imagine him like little Bowser. No, I, I was thinking of like bowels, but either, either way, like I, I, that's my new, that's my new uh, pronunciation of Bob uh, Bowlesby. That's, that's what I'm sticking with that from now on. Um, yeah, anyone who has a name that ends in Y, I'm a little bit worried about him. Um, I would like to pick Auburn. I would also like to pick Auburn. Yeah. Jacksonville state didn't actually win their conference. They shouldn't be in this tournament. Give me Auburn. All right. Yeah, they screwed over. Who did they screw over again? It was uh, they Bellerman and my dreams Bellerman. of they should have forfeited the game. Bellerman. So this is what happened. Jack Bellerman should have just forfeited the game since they couldn't have gone. So I could have cashed my nice, tasty Jacksonville University Dolphins plus six hundred <laughs> ticket, and they didn't. They didn't bow the knee. So Bellerman won, causing Jacksonville not to win. So that hurt <laughs> me. And then Jacksonville doesn't even get to go to the tournament. So it's just it's. <laughs> It was just it's double fraud. pain. I hate all those teams in there. Liberty's also in there, but that's for reasons not this tournament. So, Coach K probably had something to do with it. Probably. All right. Starting out the round of 32, we have the Gonzaga Bulldogs versus the Boise State Broncos. I don't really have much to say about either of these teams, but I feel like these are two schools that believe in weighted GPAs at the college level. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to get more. We got more viewers. Come on. We we got, uh, what, 31 more games? So, Ty, keep on thinking of stuff. I'm going to go Gonzaga, um, Drew Timmy, Chet Holmgren, overwhelm Boise State, even though that was a team that I really like. And if they were versus another one seed in this tournament, um, I could have seen them putting up a fight. The Zags are too much here. Uh, once again, kind of crush a, a pretty solid eight seed like they did to my beloved OU Sooners last year. Gonzaga, easy. I just think they're the best team in the nation. Boise State's good, just not that good. Much like UConn in this game, I may have bit off more than I can chew with coming up with jokes on each one. Who do we have, UConn versus Arkansas? <gasps> I think this is going to be an awesome game. Like, I'm really – I hope this happens because I think there's some really intriguing – kind of like my Kimba candidate this year in J.D. Note versus actual UConn. I think Eric Musselman's a way better coach than Hurley at UConn. I don't think Hurley's that good of a coach. 
but there's just something about that UConn f- uh, physicality. I love RJ Cole. I love Snowgo in the middle. They just they do some of those things like rebounding and other things. I think very well. They're a dumb team. Like if it's a close game, Utah UConn's gonna blow it. They're not smart. They're dumb. They do dumb things and turn over the ball. They just it's. Because of their coach. It's because of their coach. Their coach really isn't that good. They're like TCU on steroids. It's like they get, they have a lot of talent and that wins some games. But I just, I got to choose the talent here. I just think with with that, they can frustrate J.D. Note. If you take him out of the game, then I don't think the pieces on Arkansas can really beat you. So give me UConn. I am also going to roll with the Huskies here. Um, you know, I, I, I think this is going to be a great matchup as well. You know, they, everything Blake said, like that a lot. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like, I feel like the Yukon Huskies have kind of got their magic back. The second they went back to the big East, things just feel right again. And uh, you know, Yukon making a deep run. I don't know what, what better way to celebrate that. Yeah, I agree. I picked Yukon in my bracket and I'll continue with it here. All right. Up next, we have the Crimson Tide versus the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Battle of the most insufferable fan bases, if you ask me. <laughs> yes, I like Texas Tech here. I do not like Alabama at all. Uh, like I said, Rutgers and Notre Dame. Uh, I wish it was a different 11 seed. Give me Texas Tech. This is an easy peasy pick for me. This is such a contrast of styles. You know, a- Alabama is either hot or they're cold, but Texas Tech is just kind of steady. They're sturdy, they play great defense. And that is who you want to count on because you don't know of like you don't know when that uh the, that well of offense is going to get cut off. Um, but with defense, that travels, that extent, that 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 moves on throughout a tournament. So um, yeah, give me the Red Raiders here. I I just you know they're 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 way more predictable. Yeah, I think this one's easy. I didn't have even Alabama making it out the first round, and I think kind of for the same reasons why Montana State, I don't think, uh, is going to be able to beat Texas Tech. They clog the lane. Alabama has to shoot threes. They're not good at shooting threes, and it just makes it easy. So give me Texas Tech. All right, up next, Michigan State Spartans versus the Duke Blue Devils. Is this going to be Coach K's last game? This is hard for me. Two frauds going up against one another. I'm not a big Tom Izzo fan. I know he has those runs and yada, yada, yada. But he has a, he's only won one championship throughout his career. He's talked about in kind of that upper echelon level. And he's been, over his career, he's 3-12 and 12 against Coach K. Like, that's not good. That inspires no hope. And that's why, like, I need Fullerton to knock him off. That's why I love Davidson here because Davidson would be that team that would knock off Coach K. This one wouldn't feel – I don't want Michigan State to be the one that knocks him off. It doesn't feel as hilarious. It doesn't feel right because it's going to be the respect fest. It's going to be, oh, Coach K and Izzo, like two titans coming together, shaking each other's hands. I don't want those storylines. I need the small school – knocking off duke i just i think duke moves on from this i just don't think michigan state's good i don't think they should have gotten into this round in the first place give me duke these are two teams that like really like know each other well obviously with um uh, the champions classic that starts you know before the season they usually play in that um they play a lot of games against each other like blake said uh that record against Izzo is um it, it, it's 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 pretty significant. So, you know, e- even though I faded Duke round one and boosted Michigan State in favor of Izzo in March, I'm going to go with Duke here. Yeah, I'm going Duke as well. I don't like this Michigan State team. I thought about picking Davidson, um, but like I said, I could not roll with uh, the momentum of that Davidson team. I like Duke here, and I'm picking them because I'm, I'm against Michigan State. I'm not for as much Duke. Let me just say, I'm glad we eliminated Michigan State because the next round I was going to have to resort to an Izzo-Lizzo joke. So next, we have <laughs> Baylor versus Marquette. And this is going to be a tough one to watch, really, because Baylor could win this one or not. You never know because they won't report it either way. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Hey, look. Give that's, me. That's, that's good. <laughs> Give me Bela. The Bears. Bears. <laughs> this is an easy one. 
St. Mary's versus Akron. Will Akron continue to zip up the competition? <laughs> that was like, oh gosh. Uh, St. Mary's, just, they're both very similar teams, very defensive heavy, have athletes. I just, I really like this St. Mary's team this year. I felt like they didn't get a lot of opportunities to really show who they are. They got that one grand one with the win, a big win versus Gonzaga. Like that inspires a lot of hope for me, for them. I just, I really like this team, but this one's going to be great. I would be fine with Akron moving on, but give me St. Mary's. This is going to be a really good one. I, I agree, even though I have watched like none of these teams in the same way that Blake has. Uh, I do know the pedigree of St. Mary's, and it feels like this is a time for a deep run for them. So give me the St. Mary's. Uh, I believe they're the Gales. James, what do you mean this is going to be a really good one? This is going to be Indiana-UCLA with UCLA advancing. But give me St. Mary's since this is our matchup. All right, so up next we have Texas versus Purdue. I'll just – say there's a reason that trains have a cattle pusher on the front of them man i love this purdue team i understand blake you were worried about their defense but i like a lot of what i saw you know even though they lost to iowa how they're ending this end of the team like end of the year and plus like i feel like teams that can make a run in this tournament if you have you know a high power offense with good big men and also a star guard that can create shots in jay and ivy I think they've just got a recipe that they can make a run. Um, I think they give Texas some good work here. So the common denominator here is drums. Uh, as we know from the college football talk, Purdue has a big drum and they would do anything for it. They tried to bring it into Notre Dame and they wouldn't let them. They wanted to win for big drum. You know what Texas is going to do with their big drum, their stadium? I'm not talking about the other actual drum they have. They're tearing it down. They're trying to build a new stadium, and it does not look like a drum. So you know what? I'm going to pick the team that respects the drums and is particularly a better team, I believe, um, Purdue, because uh, Texas is eventually going to choke, and they hate drums. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to take Purdue here. I hate this team. I think uh, if Virginia Tech is there, I think there's an upset potential there just because their defense is so bad. And we can go – we'll hit on them more in the next round, but this Texas team's just not gelled like people think they are. I just think, yeah, in that matchup, I would definitely have Purdue. All right. Up next, Murray State versus Kentucky. All I know is that nobody eats Murray State fried chicken. Give me, give me Kentucky. I really like this Kentucky team this year, and I think they deviated a lot from what Coach Cal has done in the past, which I always thought was a bad model for him. So uh, Murray State's going to be very good. I think it's going to look very similar to uh, the Wofford-Kentucky uh, game where Cal at the end of it is complaining that they had to get such a hard opponent uh, that Murray State shouldn't even be a seventh seed or Wofford shouldn't have been a seventh seed, that they should have been a higher seed and hit them later. But I think it's going to be a close Kentucky win. But interesting fact, these obviously both of these teams are from Kentucky, have never played before ever. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's big time. I That fact alone may actually flip my vote. I'm going to go with Murray State because I, I feel like these type of matchups that have just never happened because the big school doesn't want to schedule the little school, doesn't want to give them credibility. I, I don't know. I always, I always feel like the little school has a bit of an advantage. They have a chip on their shoulder. Murray State's been rising through the years. You know, you had, you, you have NBA players such as Cameron Payne and John Morant, you know, come up through it. And uh, now they're at the spot where they're a seven seed. They're a legitimate, solid team. And, um, you know, this is their moment. And I think they uh, take a shine to that. I think that, I think it, I think it means slightly more to them. Uh, so give me Murray State to move on. I really want to pick Mary State here, but I think this Kentucky team is made to where it's really hard for them to lose in an upset to like a very lesser team. To Shibwe, I just don't think he's going to let anyone of a, like a lower, you know, a non, you know, big time conference in basketball um, let those kind of recruits beat up on him. It, he's just going to get a, a ton of offensive rebounds and just com completely dominate the game. And I also really like Ty Ty Washington as well. This is a bummer because I wanted to pick Murray State to move far, but I have to go Kentucky here. All right. Next up, we have Arizona 
against their second little whipping boy of the tournament, it really seems like the real conspiracy is is Arizona's schedule here. Yeah, I'm going Arizona. I didn't actually really like Seton Hall at all. Yeah, I just wanted to troll Blake as well. Give me the uh, Wildcats. Yeah, screw y'all. I actually think if TCU makes it to this, they could give Arizona <laughs> a few problems. <laughs> I think I don't think TCU would beat Arizona, but I wouldn't be surprised if they gave them gave them some trouble for the first half of things. But Arizona has been the I think consensusly the second best team. If not, you can make a case for the best team in the nation. Seton Hall has nothing. To, yeah, just get Arizona. Just say Arizona. All right, next up, UAB versus Chattanooga. I'm not going to be able to top my last UAB joke, so we're just going to roll with this one. Uh, this Back in Chattanooga still, uh, like I said, I just love the makeup of their team and how many uh, former mid or major conference guys that they have on a mid-major. I think they have great guard play. I think they have uh, great post play. It's just a formula to win. I think there's definitely going to be double a double-digit seed in the Sweet 16 for sure. And I just think Chattanooga, in my mind, is the most likely to do that. This is tough. It's always sad getting these 12-13s because I love both. I, I you, you love to see the underdog advance. And, you know, the more underdogs, the better. So having to lose one is like, it's sad. It's sad. But um, you know what? I got I, I, I to just roll with the mocks here. Max, baby. Yep. Uh, I would have liked to see Houston here, but at least I liked Chattanooga. All right. Up next, Colorado State versus Tennessee. The classic bachelorette party decision. Are we going to Denver or Nashville? So who do we have here, Colorado or Tennessee? <laughs> We're going Tennessee. That team looked good in the SEC tournament. And like I, I y'all kind of already heard it from me. I like a lot of their players too. I think they've got some good length. They've got good athletes and they've got shooting around. Um, I think Tennessee rolls. The Vols really feel like a team that has final four written all over them for me. Bruce Pearl has them rolling. Uh, so give me Tennessee. Not Bruce Pearl. I'm an idiot. I was about to Bruh. say, pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm clearly live. I he he has a, a SEC team SEC team rolling. I, I Bobby, mean, he's not doing as he's not doing as well as Rick Barnes is at Texas, of course. But Bobby hasn't watched like a college basketball game in about a decade. That's what that show. No, okay. I just I had him mixed up. I, I I screwed up. Rick Barnes is great at Tennessee. I'm an idiot. That was really dumb. That was really that was one of the dumber ones. Anyways. Yeah, Tennessee. I think uh, I can see Michigan there too, but just Tennessee. Like, I think they're just really good. All right. Up next, the Ohio State University versus Villanova. My question is where do the helmet stickers go? <laughs> oh, that's me. Right? Oh, Villanova. I think this is easy. I think Villanova cruises on. Give me Nova. Nova rolls. All right, up next, Kansas, the Jayhawks versus the San Diego State Aztecs. I think everyone agrees on on this one. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you, Blake. I pick Creighton in my bracket, so um, to go to the thirty round of thirty two, uh, go Kansas. See, I'm pretty I'm pretty big on San Diego. Start Kawhi Leonard. Kid has a future, uh, but Kansas is just a little bit too much too good here. He needs to work on his shooting, though, Bobby. Uh, yeah, I know he. he but look, if he got onto onto a team like the Spurs, you know, maybe develops for a couple years, could be good. I yeah, Kansas. Uh, yeah, there's no way I will ever pick San Diego State. I think they present a bad matchup if they were against Kansas because I hate David McCormick. I think he is one of the most fraud, overrated players in the entire nation. <laughs> and if you apply an ounce of pressure on that man, he will not be able to make anything around the rim, which is kind of what San Diego State's good at. And like Bill Self just won't stop running the offense through David McCormick, which makes no sense. But uh, yeah, there's no way. There's no way. If I, yeah, there's no way San Diego State makes it to the Sweet 16. Absolutely no way. All right. Up next, we have Iowa versus Providence. Personally, I think the Hawks have their eyes on the Sweet 16. <laughs> God. 
oh, this is going to be a great matchup. Like, this is awesome. I think regardless of what comes out of it, either Providence or uh, South Dakota State, I think are going to present different different types of games, but both great in their own right. I love this Iowa team. There's just something. I might just be right in the hype, but it's just I I like them against a matchup like Providence. I think what South Dakota State is, I think Iowa is the significantly better version of it and has actually played legitimate competition. So give me the running gun offense of Iowa. It's a federal law that Iowa is banned from the Sweet 16. Give me Providence. I like Iowa. Honestly, because I really like this team. Like I said earlier, it's an absolute farce that they're a five seed. Um, I think their offense overpowers this Providence team. Like Blake said earlier, they've been just – they've been stumbling their way through this season. There have been so many times where I check in and I'm like, ooh, Providence is about to get upset. All of a sudden, they've just worked their way back and won by a couple points. That's not going to fly versus a team like, like Iowa. You fly. just – if you if you are within uh, one possession going into like three or two minutes left in the game versus Providence, you might as well just pack your bags. Like they are just that lucky this year. Like you just you're gonna lose that game. You're gonna lose, so you better blow them out. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have Iowa State versus Wisconsin. They're used to battling over students who didn't have the GPA for Michigan. Now they're battling on the court. Who do we have? Is this me? Because I don't even want to talk. Wisconsin. Look, if, if this was a drinking contest, it would be even. Uh, a lot of bush light would be had. But uh, look, Wisconsin can handle the heavier stuff. So give me the uh, Badgers. Yeah, Badgers. The, the Iowa State's gross. It's, I can't back this team. It hurt me to even move them on to that round. If they get one win, it's like that's that's a massive, massive win yeah. for their season. Yeah. Just yeah. gross team. Right. Gross. <laughs> Up next, USC versus Auburn. Have I made a joke about inflation yet? <laughs> I but, think uh, Auburn rolls. I think Indian Field will keep it close just because of how he coaches in March. But I I like this Auburn team, too, Auburn team too much. I think they have the link with Kessler at the bottom. I think Jabari Smith obviously is going to be a top three pick in the NBA. I just like that matchup better. Uh, they've been inconsistent lately, but I don't think Auburn starts to struggle here. I feel like teams that have like the one and done really top tier players can struggle. And, uh, you know, for example, Kevin Durant didn't reach the sweet 16 because they ran into a USC team. I don't think that happens here. Give me Auburn. I'm really close to picking USC. I know it doesn't matter for the sake of our bracket, but um, my decision has a lot of thinking to do. I just like that USC team. I really do. I like Boogie Ellis. I like um, Mobley's big brother, Isaiah Mobley. Um, I like the length that they have. I think that they could shut down Jabari um, in terms of like defense. You know, I am worried about, you know, Walker Kessler, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. But for the sake of this, I, obviously, we already see um, Auburn moving on. I definitely understand that. Like, if somebody wanted to have like a contrarian bracket, like you, like USC always kind of does that. It was like last year they were really like everybody's like, oh, they have Evan Mobley, but uh, like not super high on them. And like they made a great run. It's just like they kind of have that energy about them. It's just yeah. I just I just can't see it. I just can't see it this year. All right, rolling into the Sweet 16, and just in case Lane Kiffin is is listening, that is not a reference to the age of consent. So oh no, we have. Oh God. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Gonzaga here, UConn. Um, I they've got a tough matchup in the last round. I can't pick them to win because there's a chance they could lose to Arkansas. Give me the Zags. Yep, I think. Gonzaga rolls here. Chet Holmgren, I think, is the X factor because I think Sonogo can uh, take Timmy in the post. But when you have a guy that's seven feet that can stretch the floor for you, that's really hard to counter. And I don't think a lot of teams have had experience with trying to do that with Chet this year. I think he's going to be the key reason for a late tournament run. So give me Gonzaga. All right. Up next, Texas Tech versus Duke. I think if Duke did make a run this far into the tournament, Tech is going to be the first one that gives them a shot at, at knocking them out. 
I think you're very right, Ty. Like, I, this matchup just is hell for Duke. Duke hasn't been playing well on defense. They kind of seem like a team that's not trying at all. Probably, like, Coach K probably not being a good coach, mailing it in, more making it about himself. Um, but I just think Texas Tech is a de- defensive nightmare for a team that I think is going to be riding, like, that's why I can maybe see the Cal State Fullerton upset. Like, I think this team is feeling the stress that they need to win, like, something big for K in his last go around. We saw it in the ACC tournament, lackluster effect, uh, lackluster game there, lackluster game, the last one at Cameron. I think this team is too young and not prepared for the pressure of the storylines that are being placed on them. Oh, this is tricky. Um, I feel like it doesn't, I feel like. Fun- the final four doesn't happen for Duke, but it, but they beat Texas Tech here. I what? the red no. Warriors, Yeah, I I don't know, man. I this is tough. I just I don't see it. I just don't see it. Um, what do you I, mean you I, don't I, see it? <laughs> I don't know. I have a weird feeling that Duke doesn't lose to Texas Tech. I just maybe it's just my tiny pea sized brain, but seeing the two logos next to each other, I'm just like I I don't know. I I think Duke. I think they go out next round against Gonzaga. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like, I like Duke here. Maybe because I just saw them like go scoreless for like eight minutes um, against OU the other day. I don't know. Not feeling. Do you old, see what Bobby. they did against UNC? Like <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, Bobby, if your pea sized brain is that, then we're two peas in a pod. Cause I'm Stop. Picking- Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I think that I'm not going to talk about Paolo. I'm going to talk about AJ Griffin giving him some fits and having a big game and beating Texas Tech. No. AJ Griffin becomes a big name this tournament. Put that down. No. Yeah, big name and blowing it to Fullerton in the first round, <laughs> more likely. Blake, we gave All you right. an out. We gave you an out. All right. Next up, Battle of the Bible Colleges, Baylor versus St. Mary's. I think it's the Bears. I think it's the Bears as well. Um, I already told you all what I thought about St. Mary's. I think they're a very respectful team. I don't have anything bad to say about them. Our bracket's looking uh, pretty, pretty chalky, but I like Baylor here. This one gives me some hesitation. I like, <laughs> I want to pull the trigger so bad on St. Mary's. I just, there's something about Baylor. Like, I know they're still good, but it's just LJ Cryer. They've kind of like had him like in the back, in their back pocket saying day to day, day to day, day to day. I feel like that day is never going to come where he comes back this year. Like, it just doesn't seem, and they kind of need him this tournament. I know they have other pieces, but I just, feel like they need that extra oomph that they didn't have against OU. I know they ended the season well versus Tech and uh, Texas and got some big wins there, but I just feel like something's wrong with Baylor, and I just feel like something's very right with St. Mary's. I don't know. I just – I see it. I could just see St. Mary's in the Final Four this year. That just, like – I – like, that is – that just feels right for some reason. But I guess, yeah, it doesn't matter what I say. I'll say St. Mary's, but – Baylor moves on. All right. Kentucky versus Purdue. I know who I have in this one. Who do you guys have? That was a lame. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, God. I think Kentucky rolls them. I have talked about it at length on this podcast before. Purdue's defense sucks. And if you, to win a national championship, you usually have to have a top 25 offense and a top 25 defense. They have a top 10 offense, but they have the 100th defense in the nation. A power five school that was once ranked number one this season has the 100th defense in the nation. And that just shows me they don't try. Like, I think with the talent that they have, if you just try, you're going to be in the top 75, top 50 with the talent they have. Zach Eadie's going to get worked. I, the man does not look like he likes to play basketball. It looks like he was born tall, and then when he goes out there, he's just like kind of lumping around. And like, yeah, he's big, and so he gets rebounds, he gets points easy that way, but he just doesn't seem like he loves the game. I love Toshibwe this year. I just think he works some. I just think they have every uh, uh, advantage on the floor. Give me Kentucky. I like the Wildcats here as well. Um, they just, I, I think they're just a cut above um, Purdue. It's it, it's going to be, a, I, I, I think if this happens, 
very fun match. Uh, two teams that are, you know, weirdly enough, geographically close to each other somewhat. Uh, so yeah, give me, give me could do, or, or sorry, give me, I do, give me, get, could do, <laughs> give me Kentucky. We've reached that part of the show. Daylight savings uh, ha- happening right before this and doing it at eight was, um, yeah. <laughs> What do you mean? It's it's freaking eight forty right now, Bobby. I'm I'm an old man, Jameson. Bobby, this is this daylight savings thing should be helping you. All right, yeah. all right. Let's let's keep no, the be, pace going. It should let's be ten forty one, right? Let's not no. sidebar nope. into daylight savings talk, please. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Spring forward, fall back. Yeah, wait, so. wait, 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 wait. I lost an hour though. <laughs> Bobby, you lost sleep. But it's earlier right now. Earlier, it's earlier. But I'm than still you think. sleepy. You know, daylight it would be the exact same segue. time, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect segue uh, into a team that's coming up. Arizona doesn't practice daylight savings, so let's try to get to them. Um, I, I, somehow, I, somehow, Chattanooga has made it. I love, I love the aspect <laughs> of it, but I have a weird feeling they're going to lose by 25 to Illinois, and it's going to hurt us. Give me Arizona. No 13 seed has made the Elite Eight until now. Give me the mocks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is tasty. Kirk Carriza, I call him the modern day Dion Waiters. This man has moxie. He has moxie, but he sucks. There is not a shot that he has taken that he did not love. And my man misses so many shots, but he's really the X factor. He's the ball handler for Arizona. If he's not playing, I think he'll be back then. If he's not playing, maybe the Mox can make it. But I can't go. Arizona's too good of a team. I can't do it. They have talent all oh. over that roster. I I have to. I have to. I can't say I've watched all these games this year and have the Mox that deep. But please make me wrong, Chattanooga. That would be awesome. I would love that. But actually, no. Don't do that because we could face y'all. And no, because I want TC out. So the mocks, this is as far as you're going, regardless. <laughs> you want TCU to beat. You want the- yes, that's what I'm saying. Trying- that's what I'm saying. The farthest they could go is the Sweet 16 where they are now versus TCU. And that's where it so has to So Arizona? Yes. Arizona? Oh, yep. boo. All right. Up next, we have Tennessee versus Villanova. Tennessee. Just, I do not like this Villanova squad. I think they're like solid. They bring back a lot of experience. Colin Gillespie, of course. Jay Wright's a good coach. There's just been something off about them this year. It's like they'll get good wins, uh, but like they'll play like a Baylor and just get blown out. And so I just don't know like really how to meter them against legit like talent. And so I got to go. I got to go Tennessee. I've loved what I, I think the SEC has a, fantastic top part of their conference everything else is crap and tennessee has done really good against that top half and they've also beaten arizona i just feel like they that experience of playing actually good teams i think just sends it over the edge i've been riding hard on tennessee i'm gonna keep it go vols Smokey moving on to the elite eight mm-hmm. let me some tennessee All right, so coming up next, Kansas versus Iowa. Battle of the Birds, who do we have? I like Kansas here, and Iowa's time to shine is now gone. I don't know. I just like this Kansas team a lot. I really like, you know, I I think that they've got some weaknesses, and they showed them throughout the season. But what I saw in the tournament made me think that they kind of maybe have ironed out some of those problems. I think Kansas wins here. This is increasingly seeming like one of those Kansas years where they just have it together. They don't get tripped up and everything just works out for them. Give me the Jayhawks to take out Iowa. I think this is big Iowa territory. I hate Kansas in this game. I think this Kansas team is really not that good. They are not that good. They have so many flaws. And I think Ochayabaji, I just don't trust him in big moments. I've seen it throughout this entire year. I don't touch David McCormick. I don't trust Kansas in the tournament anymore. I think Iowa, there's just something special with that team this year. I'm like... I was never made it, or Fran McCaffrey hasn't taken them to uh, pass the round of 32, but like that happens till it doesn't happen. And so I just think it happens this year where Iowa just makes finally their big run. 
I I hate this Jayhawks team. But they've been gifted the best bracket, the easiest bracket by far in the tournament so far. All right. Up next, Wisconsin versus Auburn. If this were a college football game, it would inexplicably be a top 15 matchup with top 30 teams. <laughs> I think for sure it's Auburn. Uh, Wisconsin's like, it's the same thing as Providence, but in the Big Ten. Uh, they've had a great year. Johnny Davis is really good. If Johnny Davis is even slightly hurt versus this team, they get buried. I'm just kind of relying on the fact that he's not 100% healthy, but there's just too many things I like about Auburn. Bruce Pearl, great Mar- like March coach, so give me Auburn. Uh, well, Blake, as far as you're concerned, uh, Bruce Pearl's at Tennessee, so got you there. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got <laughs> – okay, so I'll, I'll go with this. I really like – I, 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 I'm kind of loving this Wisconsin team. I think they uh, they figure out a way to trip up this Auburn team. Um, but it's going to be – this This looks like a good matchup to me. So, um, yeah, Wisconsin. Ugh. I had Wisconsin in my brackets. I didn't know about Johnny Davis. Ugh, I, sh- I should I, I should have I sh- I, I, – what you said gross. about his ankle scares me. I, I like Auburn here. I, I Honestly, I like that Wisconsin team with the healthy Johnny Davis. I like what I saw from the regular season, but I guess I did not watch them close enough in the tournament. So I like Auburn. All right, moving on to the Elite Eight. Uh, Bobby, actually, if you could maybe zoom in because I'm working entirely off mobile, uh, Ooh, so I can't yeah. see. But as Bobby's zooming in, I just want to mention, first off, that four and a half can be Elite Two, right? It's more about the motion than the actual number, but we'll roll into the Elite <laughs> Eight. So to start it out, we have Gonzaga and UConn. Oh, no. We're, we've already done Gonzaga and UConn. We're back to Gonzaga and Duke now. Luke. I'm sorry, Gonzaga and Duke. Yeah, there we go. The bracket gets weird at this point. Let me let me tell you something, uh, Blake. You know this Duke team's got some pretty good players. Now, have you ever heard of? <laughs> have you heard no. of Paolo Bencaro? I've heard he's pretty <laughs> darn good. <laughs> I mean, I've it's, seen the way he can score the ball at will makes me think that they could take down a team like Chet Holmgren just can get pushed around by those Duke players. Like, are you kidding me? You think that they're going to be able to handle A.J. Griffin? Give me Duke. Hmm. No, I'm not doing it to Blake. I, I, I'm i throwing him a lifeline here. It's going to be the Zags. Uh, I, Thank I think you. they're they're <laughs> Look, they're good enough to figure this out. They've, they've been playing top-level competition for long enough in these tournaments, in – not conference it's they're they're not they're not little old gonzaga anymore they're 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 a legitimate a legitimate team uh and a national championship contender the little guy delivers the dagger to coach k yeah i for sure rolling with gonzaga here i know duke kind of uh pulled it over um and the uh early on in the season but uh Gonzaga just kind of blew it at the end of the games but the thing that they didn't have then that gonzaga has now i think Chet really, uh, like, grew up, like, during this season and, like, really found a way to contribute for this team that I think he's a great offensive piece. I think he's one of the best defenders in the nation right now. All eyes are going to be on this game because it could be the potential one and two picks of the NBA draft, but I have Chet. Chet's the man. Yeah, all things aside, I really think Gonzaga is going to win this game. I think they match up really well versus Duke, and I think that they get some good revenge. Yeah, rematches always, well, maybe not always, but usually turn out to be different, as OU fans unfortunately know. Okay, up next, we have Baylor versus Kentucky. I think this is going to be one of the most fun games to watch if it happens. Oh, is it me? Oh, I think Baylor might not even make it to this round. I love Kentucky. I think they have the the perfect amount of uh, seniority on that team with Ty Ty Washington, the freshman. I think they're just perfectly balanced this year that they can really they can go up against any team because Kentucky can shoot, they can defend at the rim, they can rebound really well just by the pieces that they have. I think this is a very well rounded team, and probably a few months ago, or like a month or two ago, my favorite to win the title. Uh, I just think some of the other teams have grown up a little bit more, but I think this, the kind of, if you're picking the bracket, the top eight or nine teams in the nation when it comes to seeding really all have a great chance of winning this year. And then I think the S curve drops significantly after that. 
So I just think Kentucky, it's just, I like their roster makeup and I just, Baylor just hasn't been able to get right on the injury side of it. So give me the Wildcats. Yeah, no, I mean, this is it. it it's Kentucky. I, I think Baylor still a very good team. Uh, but you know, I, I, I am with Blake Kentucky just, they, they have the athletes, but it, the cohesion is there where it wasn't there before um, in previous years. So give me the Wildcats. Yeah, I, I think uh, whoever wins this Purdue-Kentucky game can set up and beat Baylor. Baylor obviously has a lot of, you know, they're a solid team, but they're not sexy to me. I think Kentucky, I, I really liked Shibwe. And I already told you, Ty Ty Washington's a guy, you know, if I'm looking at some raw freshman as an NBA team, I'd be interested in him if he falls a little bit later into the teens. Um, so I'm going to go with Kentucky here as well. All right, guys. And this one is going to have to change it up. Arizona versus Tennessee. This one could go either way. Our final four is looking very blue. Are we going to change up the color scheme here? Yeah, I think we go orange here, and I think we go Tennessee. I just really like what that team showed. And Arizona, I, I know that they've got a lot of talent, Blake. I know that they've got a pretty good team. Um, but to be honest with you, in just the couple games that I watched of them, they just don't have that wow factor whenever you watch a team. You can It's kind of hard to put into the numbers, but some teams you just watch and you can kind of be like, okay, I can see this team going far. They've got some pretty good you know, players. Um, they got some good momentum to them. They just have that it factor. Arizona just really hasn't popped off the page whenever I watch their games, and I, I, I don't know what it is. Obviously, I haven't watched as many games as I should have of them. But it just I just don't get excited watching that team. Tennessee, especially in the SEC tournament, I got excited watching them, and I thought they had an all-around really solid team. I've been saying that the whole bracket challenge, Tennessee just feels right here. I feel like they're going to make a run, um, and I think they go all the way to the Final Four. Arizona, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm very – I'm not a fan of the Pac-12 whatsoever, ever, and I just – I think Tennessee just has a – just a bit extra more and uh gets gets the win here i hor i horribly disagree with y'all i uh i think arizona i like i said before i think they could be the best team in the nation like they have so many pieces in mithurin coloco uh kirk Ariza. like those guys are all ballers and they fit really well together and that's what's so great about them is they have that nba talent there but they just mesh so well together and i think tommy lloyd is a great coach he's obviously been on those gonzaga teams for a long time got them far i don't trust rick barnes in march i don't know i just can't get over that fact either and these two teams have played this year like tennessee beat arizona but it was it was tennessee at home and honestly arizona played their worst game that year that i saw them play the entire time and they only lost by four like they, they came back play. in the second they in the second half in Arizona played pitiful that game and they still only lost four. I I think this is a sham that I think Arizona is <laughs> easily going to be in the national championship. I like could see it winning them all, being an apprentice versus master. I the picks have been done and we got to roll with it. But I think I love Arizona in the ring. I didn't I know love, that they played. I forgot yeah. about that. I like I like Arizona. I like revenge games. We can't go. Can't go back. No, no back. switching. Okay. No switch. Up. That okay. sucks. That sucks. I think Arizona is like, I. Okay. I think a, almost a guaranteed lock to be in the final four. I think both them and Gonzaga. It just like it has that feeling. All right, and Kansas and Auburn. I think this one is is pretty clear cut. Yeah, it's Auburn. <laughs> this uh, I don't even think this Kansas team is going to make it this far. Any th they would have had to gone through Auburn, Iowa, and Creighton. Like that's a that's a rough that's a rough go. Uh, so I just this Kansas team I think is so flawed, and it's like maybe because I've watched them so much that I really understand their flaws. And uh, but I just I think they're so flawed. So give me Auburn. It feels like a Kansas here. Give me the Jayhawks. It doesn't though. Does why? Why? Why does it feel like a Kansas year? It just does. It just does. I don't know why. I feel like they're hitting their stride. Are they? Like, I, 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 they had a really good tournament, and I know, like, yeah, I don't know. I just have a weird feeling about Kansas. Like sometimes, the, you know, like the the stars align and Bill Self randomly gets hot. Doesn't happen often, but usually, but I just I feel it. I feel it, and I don't know why. 
Yeah, I'm going with Kansas here as well. Um, I I kind of have the same feeling that Bobby has. Like, um, I I the I and I it's honestly I'm scared it might be recency bias, but watching that Texas Tech game, I I I really like how they played in it. They looked you know solid. They looked solid throughout the whole Big Twelve tournament. They didn't seem like to skip any beats. I don't know. I just there's something telling me inside just watching that Big Twelve tournament that, I, and I hate that a lot of my bracket picks are off of recency bias, but it's a big thing of how you're going into March Madness. So recency bias is honestly a good thing to have. All right. So rolling into the final four, our final four teams: Gonzaga, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Kansas. So we've come up with an interesting collection here. Let's start off with Gonzaga and Kentucky. Who do we have? Um, I'm going to go Gonzaga here. Uh, like, like Blake said, you know, that Chet Holmgren's really kind of moving into himself and he's going to be an absolute darling of this tournament. He's going to go all the way through and then people are going to be like, Oh, this is a surefire number one pick in the draft. And it's all Amen. this. I don't, I don't know if, you know, you know, like, Oh, well, should we pick Jabari Smith or, or, Oh, should we pick Paolo? You know, Chet's going to make himself the number one pick in the draft. Now, do I think he's going to be the best NBA player? I don't know. Yes. But in terms of, uh, I mean, I would pick Jabari Smith if I had it my way um, for the Thunder, but that's a completely whole different sport and um, thing to talk about. So I like Gonzaga. Um, I think they've got a lot going for them, and Kentucky ends their run. I Kentucky has made a really good run here, and you know, look, it, New Orleans—they're going. That is, this this the Caesar Superdome is going to be just straight blue. Um, I would like to have a note before we continue that uh, you and I, Jameson, prevented uh, our Final Four from having three of the four BSEC teams. Uh, oh, so so-called Shield Protector Boat and Blake trying to keep the Big Twelve champ out in favor of our our beloved SEC. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I wanted I, to pick Arizona though, and that would have helped us. So I, I, after help. Blake told, I, Blake reminded me about the, uh, the rematch factor. I love rematch factors. Oh God. I, I didn't I, know about the rematch factor. I also probably would have gone Arizona. Um, but Ooh. yeah, no, I'm going with Kentucky here. Go, going to go with Chet. Um, man, I just, uh, I don't know this. The, we say it every year that these Gonzaga teams just feel like it's the year, but I don't know it. I feel like they learned from their hubris last year, bringing in all the champagne bottles allegedly before being set up, ready to go after that Baylor win and just got smacked. I don't know. I, I feel like they're going to be focused. They're on a mission. They're back. They, they 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 flew too high to the sun, crashed back to earth, and have flown back up with a delightful, like, you know, one of those Red Bull Flugentog, like, uh, you know, little little flight you know, airplane things. So Interesting. give me Gonzaga. Very confusing. Um, but you know what? I, I don't know. I, I think the Zags have a, have a good game here. Bobby is, I feel like you like, it feels like their year this year for a lot of teams to justify them getting on the way, but it can only be one person's year at the end of the day. And I just think that's Gonzaga. I like, I love this team. I want, I want the monkey off the back of Mark Few that he's supposedly not a good tournament coach or anything. Like Gonzaga is building what Coach K did at Duke and a much better way. I think that I think the teams mesh a lot better together. I think they're going to kind of be that power, like that next power where we're talking about Mark Few always having the stranglehold. It just we need him to win that one. And so they'll become the enemy once that happens, once they win. But Right now, they just kind of get trashed on. But I just think it, this is going to be a great game. Like, I would love to see this matchup because I think there's just – this uh, This has so many, like, two just very well-rounded veteran teams going against each other. I think it ha has the potential to be an all-time classic. That's why I really want to see this matchup. Can we talk about how insane Bourbon Street would be if we threw the Kentucky and Tennessee fans, like, on it together for a Final Four? Oh my god! Oh god, that would be, be bad. That would be bad. They would <laughs> fights breaking out everywhere. <laughs> Fight, fights, fights breaking out over you know whose checkerboard is better. That sort of stuff. Ugh, oh, wonderful. All right. So up next, Tennessee versus Kansas. We all know about twenty twenty four, but will twenty? Or I'm yeah. We all know about twenty twenty four, but will twenty twenty two be Orange Man's year? 
Oh, God. You've been working on that one for a while, haven't you? <laughs> okay. Like... Ah, uh, this is gross. There's no way. I don't think there's any way either of these teams are in the final. Like, I'm sorry. You, like, gun to head, I guess, Tennessee. Uh, but I just, I feel like these are two really good teams. And, like, I think Tennessee is going to make it to the Elite Eight. I think Kansas could make it to the Elite Eight. I'm hoping more for, like, a Sweet 16 exit. But I guess Tennessee. I just definitely, this Kansas team just doesn't feel like they would get bodied. They got bodied by Kentucky. We've already seen it once. They would get bodied by Gonzaga. Like it just doesn't feel it doesn't feel right with them being there. So they're just yeah, they're just they feel off. So give me Can- I guess Tennessee. Kansas is learning. I feel like they're evolving. I think they get a win here. Yeah, I can kind of see uh who Bobby's picked for his national champion through all this. And I and I've been kind of hinting at um my liking of Kansas. But we'll see who I pick in the national championship. Uh but Kansas, I, I, I just I think O'Shea Abaji moves himself up NBA draft boards and I feel like he hasn't gotten nearly enough respect throughout the year in terms of just like him as a player in terms of being an NBA player. Obviously there's a lot of talk about him as like being a good college basketball player. Um, but I feel like he's got a lot to earn. Um, I just I think that Kansas wins this game. I think Akbaj is going to be like the name of the tournament. I don't think so. I don't. I just don't think he's really that good. Like, I think he's good, but I just don't think he's like – he just doesn't take over games when I think he's about to. They have this weird fetish, which is feeding David McCormick, and I just don't understand that. <laughs> they never fair, will. Because Ab- Abaji has like two or three games this season where he just goes cold and he hides, and I hate players that just go hiding. I, um, he, but this is different. This is the March Madness tournament. They, All right. So coming up, two big basketball schools that we picked for our national championship. We have Gonzaga. We have Kansas. And I think this would be a really good national championship because both of these teams are all about basketball. In fact, if you show up with a diploma from Gonzaga or from Kansas, people will look at it and say, oh, hey, isn't that the basketball school? Well, anyways, welcome to Enterprise Rent a Car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's tough. Oh, Here, here's my thing. I, I've been hinting at Kansas and how I'm liking Feel them more than you know most people. Um, but I really think – this game comes down to the auxiliary players. We know what we're getting out of Drew Timmy. We know what we're getting at Chet Holmgren. You know, Blake might not think about it, but I think O'Shea Abaji is obviously a presence on the court. And, you know, but I think it comes down to who are the three and number three and number four on these teams that can go and make big plays. And I think where it comes down to it, Andrew Nimpard with, with his, you know, um, being a veteran on this team and then having young guys like Strother, um, I, I think – I think Gonzaga comes out, shows out, and wins the national championship. I've been saying this whole time, it feels like a Kansas year. For me, it, a, a Kansas year doesn't necessarily we, oh, he's, win. Oh, he's, oh, he's moving. He's moving his mean? pick. No, because that, what is that? Show, the show us your bracket. The national <laughs> championship Kansas teams have some magic to them. This one does have magic. But I just have a feeling about Gonzaga. Oh, he changed it. I just no, have a feeling. For, stop. For Blue Bloods like this, their year is not like this. Their year is winning it. When you talk about their year, not whatever Bobby's loophole analysis. That I said it feels like a kid this year. Yes. How many times have they just gone to the Final Four, gone to the National Championship, and then lay an egg? That's what they do. They get then to the why Final is it their Four year? and then lay an egg. Then why is it because their year, Bobby? I said it feels like a year where they go to the final four. A like year. It feels like, yeah. It feels like a Bobby's, Kansas year. Bobby's like, out a year where they go Samantha. to the final yeah. four. Bobby said their year. He said their year. Uh, okay. yeah. well, uh, fine, I'll yeah. pick Kansas, and then we'll just pick Gonzaga because that's the next pick. And yep, that's who Gonzaga. Blake's going to pick. That, and yep. that's so, why yeah, okay, fine, Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Whatever, Ochai Baji, blah, blah, blah. I kind of would go, like okay. – in, in a way, I would love to see Kansas there just to see David McCormick be in absolute <laughs> hell in the post. <laughs> Timmy and Chet just, like, all over him. Like, I think that would be very funny to watch, but I just don't want to be that wrong on Kansas for them to get to that position. So, give me Gonzaga. I love how much Blake hates 
McCormick. Uh, uh, where does he? He's he, so he, how, bad. <laughs> uh, well, there we have all it. All right, so we, bulldog-based teams taking all of college sports this year. Looks like. Oh, I didn't think about that. Huh? huh. That makes me feel yeah. even more comfortable. The dogs. Hmm. Nice. All right, that was a that was a fun 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 pickem as as usual. It got a little testy at the end, but you know what 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 good pickem doesn't? It's because it was you obviously changed yeah, your because, pick because you knew that me and Blake were gonna pick Gonzaga, and you said I'm not gonna be on this island, and you switched. <laughs> I That's I thought I about it, and I changed my mind. No, I <laughs> no, I really thought about it. I changed well, my we'll mind. see what your real okay. bracket's like, the one that doesn't we'll have see. to do with um, odd numbers. What do you mean odd numbers? Like picking three versus three people, where obviously oh, one person yeah, can I be see what out. You mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Alrighty, well, um, yeah, that's. I think that's pretty much the show. Ty, do you have anything? Yeah, two hours. Talk? That was great. That's two one-hour podcasts. This is great. We did a really good job. Hey. All right. So thank you everyone for joining us. Whether you viewed it online listen to us a combination of both we know it's a long one for march madness we'll get some timestamps in there and split it up by the rounds we're going to be oh. wrong as soon as the first round so you might as well listen to it straight through <laughs> thank you uh bobby for letting me host this one and for jameson and boat and blake i know you guys are busy and uh, coming on here so from the pigskin podcast network and our great sponsors at DraftKings, thank you guys so much we will catch you next time I still have to end the podcast. Whoops. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I, we, I like how Ty's like volunteering getting Bobby to timestamp every single round. <laughs> <laughs> you got to no, take we, out we, the we, problematic mascot. I don't think that was, no, that was like, that was like number six worst thing. That by was the way, said. we're still live. The, by the way, we're still live. The mic is so hot. But... <laughs> 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 Let's get out of here, boys. <laughs>